Well, hello there, guys. Welcome to We the Revolution. I want to give a huge thank you to Polyslash and Claybater for getting me an early copy of this game. The actual idea behind the game is fascinating to me. We start off as a judge, a small circuit judge in France, slightly before the French Revolution. Once the game actually gets going, though, we become part of the actual revolution itself, and we have to decide whether we let people go by looking at the evidence, or whether we imprison them and or execute them. Uh, and depending on how we do that, it's going to affect certain sectors of the population, which could eventually see us removed. With that being said, guys, we're just going to start off here so you guys can get an idea of We the Revolution. Father. I am here. Do you hear me? I gave you the best I could. Why did you disarm me? I have your blood in my veins. How could you? Do I mean nothing to you? Why did you grieve for him? He was nothing. I am better than he was. People will follow in my footsteps. Father... Alright guys, so just a beautiful intro to the game. You can see the game sort of original art style, really aesthetically pleasing, I have to say, and it goes so well with this particular period in history. All right, folks, here we actually read or um, meet our father. Um, and the interesting thing here is this is pretty much just an introduction to the game itself, uh, to the actual court system, but we're pretty much just deliberating over our own family. Um, at this point, my son, or I believe my grandson, uh, nope, it's my son, sorry, has gotten into a fight and chipped another boy's tooth. And of course, now we need to take a look at these documents and letters to deliver a verdict. Um, there's also, of course, a hierarchy of different courts, um, and, you know, we're at the very bottom right now, whereas Robespierre is at the very top, and we really want to grow our standing so that we can move up in the court system. Initially, we get a case file. You want to read through this case file, and, of course, you want to take a look over here on the right uh, to see the different things that have occurred during the case file, and at this point, we want to draw links, guys, between what the child was doing and, of course, the outcome or circumstances involved. So right here, child's play, I'm just going to call this the course of events. I believe that's going to be correct. Possibility of repeating, I'm going to call this extenuating circumstances. Nope, caught in a trap. So there are traps which lead you to possible mistakes when you are deliberating, and you need to be careful um, of doing that. I'm going to go ahead and call this one course of events. Injured Antoine will be the victim, and the chipped tooth also the victim. At this point, we can go ahead and bring our questions to our son. Uh, and really what's going to happen here, we don't see it in this particular part of the game, but there's going to be a jury. And depending on the strength of our questions and how many questions we ask, we really get to the crux of the problem. The issue is, is that the people and the revolutionaries sit back here watching the trial. They don't always agree with what the jury decides. So we're going to go ahead and ask him who started the fight. And of course, my father says, I can tell you who ended it. 
how did your play turn into a fight? And we're eventually going to get to the point of uh, either deciding whether my son is guilty or innocent. What we'll take a look at after this is one of the actual proper court cases. Uh, but this shows you pretty much the verdict form. And I'm going to go ahead and say not guilty and put my signature down there. Très bien. All right. A man has to defend his honor. And, of course, the story continues. Now, you've got an interesting mix of court cases and, of course, exposition or storyline while you're playing the game. And so it really gives you a nice touch of story and gameplay. Now let's jump to one of the more serious Now cases. in this particular case, guys, one of the local merchants, Guy Dino, went to the National Guard station near the halls. With a raised voice, he stated that the owner of a neighboring stall had purposely poured wood tar into his barrel of herrings. For this supposed crime, Dino demanded a proper punishment. Soldiers went to the halls and established that the herrings did indeed taste awful. Since then, there was no evidence of the crime. They did not take any action. A few hours later, the guards returned to the halls. This time, it was the formerly accused Jean Corby who called for them, and there was a plethora of evidence on the site, the clearest one being Dino himself smashing his neighbor's stall with a long wooden pole in front of witnesses. So it's pretty clear um, that he absolutely took that, sto uh, that stall and uh, smashed the pole. Now, we can accuse him of counter-revolution, uh, but right now what we're going to do is the wooden pole will be the instrument of the crime. Uh, we know that much. Anti-revolutionary propaganda makes him guilty of counter-revolution, and he's very lucky because we're still early into the game, and execution is not an option right now. It will be in the next court case or the one after, so I'm pretty sure the worst we can give him is a prison sentence. Once again, uh, stall next to the entrance, that will be the crime scene. We unlocked all questions here, so we should be able to get away with a decent punishment. As you can see, the revolutionaries, though, want him to be acquitted, whereas the common folk and his family want, uh, or the other stall uh, owner's family, want him to go to prison. Now, this is actually the transition period between the takeover of the National Assembly and, of course, uh, Louis XVI's uh, capitulation. So it's sort of in between. We're pretty much dealing with a provisional government right now. So I'm going to go ahead and ask him some questions. I'm not proud of it, but enough is enough. So apparently he stole eight francs. This is the prosecutor. Eventually there will be a proper prosecutor. This guy's just kind of a stand-in. Um, but this is what we've got to deal with right now. So once again, what products does Citizen Corby sell? Fruit and vegetables. And you sell fish coming straight from Yeport and Petit Dalet. I see. Then why did one of you come to the halls with wood tar and the other come with a wooden pole? So Guy Deneau is not sure. I don't remember. That stick must have been lying near the stall. Corby, however, had clearly planned his actions. All right. So now it's kind of, uh, it seems that people are moving towards possible freedom. It would appear that your conflict has continued for some time now. It all started when the scoundrel placed his stall where mine should be, next to the entrance. Uh, and this is, a, and sorry, this is not the prosecutor, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong on this, but the prosecutor does usually stand here for ne uh, revolutionary proceedings. But right now, this is uh, the actual um, guy whose stall was destroyed. So his whole family fell ill. All right, we're going to ask Citizen Gorby to come closer here. And you can do this. You can also cross-examine witnesses, like in a real court case. Um, we're going to ask if he really disputes the new order. It is slander made up of a man who trades old flounders. Is that a no? Of course. I'm a merchant, not a politician. Why did you have wood tar with you that day? I sell foods, but my suppliers sometimes buy wood tar as it repels pests. And why did you pour it into Citizen Denel's barrel? I did nothing of the sort. He probably poured it on himself so as to denounce me again. Okay. So this is interesting. This definitely brings in some plausible deniability into the case. Um, we have found your denunciation of Citizen Corby. Why did you write it? He did it because I started selling sprats. I just wanted to help the city. Every shareholder pays their price, p p pays for their place in the halls. Corby should pay too. I was trying to avoid the royal taxes. You started only after the beginning of the revolution. Be quiet, both of you. So at this point, we are prepared to pass judgment. <clears throat> and it's pretty clear. Um, we get an idea here of what the jury's opinion is going to be, and they definitely want to sentence him to prison. The common folk and the family of this guy that was affected also want that to happen, whereas the revolutionaries want him to be let go, uh, because, of course, he was carrying out an arguably revolutionary act. But I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to sentence him to prison. I stand by my sentence, and until a prosecutor shows up, we only need one signature. Eventually, we're going to need the prosecutor's signature as well. All right, so that's the effects, guys, with the common folk and the revolutionaries. And remember, each verdict is pretty much going to increase or decrease your standing with both of those parties. The idea, of course, is to keep them both happy. <laughs>
One fool spewed out one word too many. The other fired a musket. They fought for freedom. Each for their own. That man. Hard to forget. He asked me if I'd seen his wife. He found his son. The freedom we borrowed from the wealthy and the noble. We believed it was worth the price. He was judged by people long devoid of their freedom. The only things they knew were dust and sweat and anger. Now, We the Revolution does a tremendous job, as you can see just in that animation there, of really letting you feel the the chaos of a revolution. We, of course, are working for the parties fighting this revolution, but nonetheless, we see all the brutality inherent in it. And in fact, those people ca that, that died uh, was because of a decision that we made, and that was a decision you didn't see, but earlier in the game, I had been asked by a guard if I gave them permission to fire on civilians if they were getting rowdy, and I said yes to that. That was, of course, the cause of my decision, uh, There's the result of my decision. Now, another factor here in the game is the family life, and there is a different way or a, a bunch of different ways to improve relations with your family, uh, with your sons, with your wife, etc. Um, and each of them seems to have sort of a focus. Um, one of them, of course, is supporter of the people. The other is supporter of the revolutionaries, uh, etc., etc. So as you can see here, we, we have sort of a relationship, um, and also they bring influence to the people. Right now, it looks like our wife is not so happy with us. Um, and uh, Burrell and Rot, unfortunately, we have to select this one. But typically, um, if we are in a family setting like this, we can select a, a tremendous amount of different choices here, which determines, you know, whether or not our family likes us. And, of course, you're trying to balance those relationships as much as you can. And as you can see there, it lets me know. I signed off on using deadly force against protesters. Our family's not all that keen on talking to you tonight. That was all the decision I made. And I could have said no. I'm not sure what the result of the no decision would have been. But it just goes to show you, in this game, it really, really gives you some leeway to play around with different things. All right, so let's take a look here. As you can see, we've lost some respect with the common folk and some reputation. And if you lose reputation completely, you will be disbarred. In the Doc 6, Matthew Burrell, the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard, the defendant stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration against monarchic authority. All right, guys, around 3 p.m., two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other on one of the streets leading to Place Vendôme. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived on the scene. According to the eyewitness testimony of Blair Fosse, Commander-in-Chief himself, um, he stood between the two groups and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the commander-in-chief of violating their freedom of speech. Um, a rock flew over Burrell's head. He then walked up to the regiment that until his point had stood away from the crowds. The commander-in-chief ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted to the mob that they should leave, which the people of France, of course, ignored. Then, as Foss had testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time, it managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burrell ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protest. During his arrest, Burrell tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, and that was me, which stated he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the convention. So, guys, we need to find out whether or not he deserves death. So, the commander-in-chief's dismissal. Uh, this is going to be, I think, extenuating circumstances. No, maybe not. Let's go for the tribunal's opinion. This is evidence. Um, do we have an evidence? No. Defense. So he's going to get that for the defense. The injured soldier, I would also um, suggest defense, but I'm going to go ahead and call it extenuating circumstances. The order to load the muskets. That is definitely an accusation. Well, the course of events. There we go. And of course, if you get one of these wrong guys, you're not going to be able to ask as many questions as you'd like. In this case, the freedom of speech, extenuating circumstances. See, we're getting some incorrect leaks. Commander-in-Chief's recklessness. Now, this is more opinion-based, so I would say accusation. The crowd's temper, 
would be the course of events or maybe extenuating circumstances. There we go. And protesters would once again be the course of events. All links have been used. Now we can break through here um, with our mentor's help to get two influence points. But again, this is not necessarily something that's suggested. You could use those influence points for something else. And the freedom of speech. And that's, of course, an accusation against him for specifically firing because he didn't like the speech being said. It's one thing if he fired because he felt his men were in danger. Commander-in-Chief, yep, Fender's personality and the Commander-in-Chief's dismissal, the course of events. We did unlock all the questions. Now, I'm still learning about the game myself, but I do believe that you can lead um, each of the, the questions. You can ask leading questions to make the jury feel a certain way. We all know who this villain is. Matthew Burrell, Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard, and shut up already! Let's get straight to the testimony. Now, even though we wrote, we, we signed off on this, guys, I'm a little concerned because the people, um, in general, want this guy dead. I'm going to say it is the condemned aware of the severity of the charges. 34 citizens were killed. Those who that were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person, but before that, another rock flew over my head. I had reason to believe that the mob would become violent. See, that's an issue. He had reason to believe they would become violent, but they didn't become violent. Well, kind of, just not to the extent he thought. Um, so, of course, we want to lead him towards the guillotine. Were you given a reason for your dismissal? Multiple reasons. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but the one that hurt me the most was my supposed incompetence. Many people have died during the revolution, and yet the murderers of the members of the convention or judges of the tribunals. Oh, wow. He's calling me a murderer here. Spare me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. If you let you go, would you go back to your duty? No. Now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge makes mistakes, so they convict a soldier. That's how it's always been and how it always will be. Ooh, he's really letting me have it. Um, let's see. We're going to summon a witness. So far, the jury hasn't made a decision yet, but I'm going to go ahead and ask Blay Fosse. Um, please tell us if you saw exactly how the accused acted. Yes, of course. That's why I'm here. I saw it. The captain. He's a captain, right? He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed them away and made threats, shaking his fists. But I think he meant well. I don't know. Just a feeling I had that he meant well. Who attacked first, the crowd or the guard? I'd say the crowd. They threw something at that poor soldier. Well, they started shooting. There was no order. I didn't hear any orders. It was loud, and it all happened so fast. So maybe this guy never gave the order to fire. Um, I'm going to say, doesn't the accused think that the order to load muskets, because it could have further aggravated the crowd uh, that was already outraged. The people of Paris had an ugly... Okay, we're not going to read all of this. Uh, if I was doing a Let's Play, I would have no issue uh, reading everything, but I'm guessing you guys want me to get through the gameplay here. So we'll let you guys pause if you want. Do you see yourself as a reckless commander? No, I think I'm calm most of the time. Comes with age and experience. All right, guys. Unfortunately for him, I could keep asking questions. I could probably even get him off. But we're also trying to cover our own butts here. And we want to bring him as close to the guillotine as possible. Um, at this point, I'm going to be ready to issue my order after we ask all questions. And again, I think asking them in order um, can actually lead you to a certain outcome. So there we go. I think it's going to be very hard for this guy to escape the guillotine. Uh, so the recommendation has been given, and it's clear um, it's clear that, in general, folks want either prison or death. And for this guy, he's getting death. I'm skipping right past prison. The last thing I need is him coming back later uh, to accuse me of something. We are signing his death penalty, even though the jury voted in favor of prison. But again, getting rid of all evidence so I don't have to uh, be be blamed later on in the revolution might be a good idea. Did he confess to his crime? Yes. Was that counter-revolutionary nature? Yes. What was the first thing the commander asked of the crowd after separating the feuding sides? Uh, submission. And we definitely stepped over the line there. But we hereby sentence him to death by the guillotine. Let him share the fate of those he shot. We did a terrible, terrible job there on the last one um, and got a bad official um, response. It could be enough for us to lose our job. Uh, that's certainly the case, but not before we kill this counter-revolutionary. 
Now we can actually go ahead and try and um, speak to the common folk, do a speech. I'm going to attempt it. Um, and we can actually use this to reveal if we had enough points. But we don't. So the crime, I think, would be... Manipulation. The defendant. And the revolution. Humility. Let's see how this works. Alright, they're getting a little irritated. Let's show some humility. They're getting a bit aggressive. Let's show some aggression. They are still annoyed. We definitely did not uh, make the crowd happy. Nonetheless, the accused is headed to the guillotine. The scapegoat will die, and indeed he is a scapegoat. This point, though, off with his head, guys. Sorry, blood must be spilled, and the revolution must continue. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with We the Revolution, and I highly recommend you guys pick it up. I can't wait to play, wait to play some more, and if you guys would like this to become an actual total Let's Play, um, then please do make sure to let me know, guys, in the comments down below, and we'll go ahead and try and do an entire uh, walkthrough. I really do appreciate you guys walking. Make sure to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Every single one of those things helps us tremendously. Catch you next time, guys. Thank you again.